I think I figured out what I'm going to do with the fantasy football thing. I think I've come to a decision. It's a new rule in our fantasy football league that while you are, during the time you are at Cirque du Soleil, you cannot score points at fantasy football. Null and void. As long as you're at Cirque, your point you don't you can't you can't have points. You cannot get points. You might want to ask. That could actually be a Nevada law. Here's the thing. Here's the problem I have though. Is the commissioner of uh, of our league, our league commissioner, is the guy who's going to be at Cirque du Soleil. Hop is the commissioner. Yes. See, now that's your own fault. You got into a league where the that Hop's commissioner. Of. I know. I'm uh, I'm aware of the. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big problem for me. Uh, at any rate, we're back. It's first look with Scott Cox, Bakersfield.com, and News Talk 1180 KERN. Here's Lewis Amistoy in the first look news desk. All right, we got uh, some breaking news, and then uh, let's take a look at uh, traffic and weather real quick. Uh, Traffic right now. um, Oh, now it won't let me access it now. CHP. Here we go. Way to go, Vaughn King. Yeah, I know. What's going on there? Uh, Nothing going on. Those horses are still causing a problem at Caliente Creek Road and Caliente Bodfish Road. Or Bodfish Road and Caliente? I'm not sure. This is according to... Mr. Sweetser would know, though, wouldn't Mr. Sweetser, call in immediately. Yes, please call in, please. Uh, other than that, traffic is pretty good. Your weather right now, uh, it is uh, going to be uh, warm and a little bit muggy today. 95 degrees is your uh, high today. Right now, current conditions here on News Talk 1180 KERN at 922. It is 79 degrees, uh, 20% chance of rain today. As we've been uh, telling you uh, today, that if you are heading uh, in the Mojave Desert, uh, there is uh, some rain up there, uh, especially in Mojave, Cal City, getting a little bit of rain today. And uh, as you make your way toward uh, the Nevada and uh, uh, Nevada and Arizona on Highway 4, Interstate 40, my goodness, man, needles, all those places. If you're making any any drive east today, it's going to hit a lot of rain. So uh, keep an eye on that. So maybe we'll get a little a little moisture today, Scott. Bob. We'll, t- we'll take whatever we could get. Get what we get. Okay, well, here's just your five-day forecast. 94 on Tuesday, 99 on Wednesday, 101 on Friday, uh, 101 probably on Saturday, too. No Yay. reports of wow. flooding, traffic problems from all the, uh, the rain? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. All right. Now, I, you know what? Actually, you know, I should check. Uh, I'll check the Barso and uh, Mojave CHP here in a minute. Uh, taking a look at, uh, so that's your value forecast around uh, 96 in Arvin, 97 in Shafter, 99 in Delano, 83 in Tehachapi, 76 in Fraser Park. Very nice. Moving on to your uh, air quality index, 93 is moderate, and that's your conditions for that. The uh, market uh, right now, the uh, Dow is down 23 points. And trading at 17,113. And the NASDAQ is up a point at 4584. SP 500 is uh, down five points at 2001. All right. Uh, breaking news in. Sheriff's detectives are looking into the death of a one year old who was found face down and unresponsive in a tub in a Ridgecrest residence. Deputies went to the 19, uh, uh, 1900 block of West Ward Avenue at about 5 50 p.m. Sunday. Rescue personnel tried CPR, but the child was pronounced dead at Ridgecrest Regional Hospital. Sheriff's homicide detectives went to the residence and say the circumstances surrounding the child's death are suspicious. An autopsy will be done. The name and gender of the child have not been released. So that's uh, some disturbing news out of Ridgecrest this morning. All right, there we are. That's a mild understatement right there. Uh, you, you guys are both uh, media-savvy people. Uh, Bob Price is joining us. He's uh, uh, like our editor-in-chief person. And Louis Samus is like uh, chief content officer or whatever. I don't really know what's up with that. Like, he, he's even more important than I am. It's like our Mr. Spock, I think, is what it comes to. It's basically Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. We couldn't do it without both of you guys, obviously. And Spock actually ran the, the, the thing. Oh, clearly. Clearly. Uh, at any rate, um, here's what I... Here's the my big takeaway from this whole uh, situation going on in TAP. Have, how long do we have before the way that news is reported in social media overruns the way it's always been done? Because now, if you want details, look, uh, TV networks or newspapers or whatnot, they can be as classy as they want with a news story about details and stuff. Well, we're not going to report that. All you need to know it was something bad. But everybody knows if you want to know what's up, all you got to do is go to Twitter, and there's somebody that will give you graphic detail about what was going on on the street. So it, against that backdrop, are we about five years away from where news is just going to be Twitter feed, that's just what news is going to be? That's, I think you're right. Uh, we're heading that direction, and that's something that newspapers and uh, local television stations are grappling with all the time, getting beat by Facebook. Now, the problem, of course, with, with uh, you know, news being reported by uh, you know, witnesses or whatever on Facebook is it's so often wrong or exaggerated or 
Yeah, yeah but people don't care about that anymore. No, uh, right. Accuracy is not a thing. Walter Cronkite's dead, dude. People, they don't need a second source. They don't need, people don't want to wait for verification. People want salacious, gory details. They want them right now. And if they're wrong, it doesn't matter because that person's already moved on to the next thing. True. But, and, and, you know, uh, we see this all the time where uh, some big breaking event will happen and uh, 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 news services will report stuff that they found on Facebook or they've or, you know, they, they heard somewhere. And there's such a, uh, a, a imperative to be first that they report invariably wrong yeah, things. And right. then there's all this hand wringing after afterward, like, you know, why did we do that? Why did we, uh, you know, send that stuff out before it was properly vetted. And it's because there's pr this pressure that we feel, uh, we being the media, to, uh, to, to be ahead of the game and not get beat, unquote, by Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, but whatever happened to, uh, there was a very fam uh, v famously, once upon a time, Walter Cronkite would go in, and he was in the news center there all the time at CBS News, and he would not report, he would not read anything on the air that was a single source story, didn't matter who it was. And it used to drive him crazy. They're like, look, we know this is happening. And Cronkite's like, nope, wait, you get me, I'm not reading anything that might not be true. Yeah. And then fast forward to now, and I, real, I, I don't know when it hit rock bottom, but when, uh, when the Martha Stewart verdict was coming in and they had people waving flags at the steps of the courthouse, why can't we wait? 30 seconds to find out what's going on. When did this contest to be first with very little regard for being accurate? When did we get there? Because if that's what people is, uh, you know, Ray Davies, the kink said, you got to give the people what they want. And if people want salacious details, true or not. And right now, you know, it, that what's going to happen is it's going to come down to ratings. How, I mean, why do I need the reporter from uh, channel, whatever out there in a van with the satellite dish and the suit and the microphone in the deal when I can just go and get something that's probably not true, but by God, it's got all the filthy details in it, and I got it right now. Yep. The, I mean, the market is going to dictate what happens with this, and I don't know that I'm for it. I really, I'd rather just, I'll g wait, let's wait an hour and get it exactly right, because that backtrack and stuff has got to stop, man. It's not cool. Uh, although some of the challenges, though, and, I, and I've seen this before, that um, social media has been at times so powerful in in trumping you know, sort of uh, the mainstream media. And I can tell you several several instances. I remember um, in my former hometown, we had a fire there in a historic building. And people on Facebook were on it. The newspaper took hours, hours mm. to report anything, you know, and were so slow to move on it. And it was like, well, everyone knew the story already, you know, because it had been shared and communicated around town. The, so. and, but the only problem with that is it does lend itself to at least the potential for hooliganism. Right. If you're in the middle of one of this, if you want to put something out there that's completely not true, you can absolutely do that. And what happens is, is it there's that we all know there's that next level of the internet. There's social media, but then there's a bunch of websites out there that will say, well, Twitter is reporting that, and they don't double check anything. Right, right. And it could be a national news story before people found out I made it up. Yes, Lewis. By the way, Stephen Hawking is still trending number one on, on Facebook. Good, good. I'm glad smart people still get some run in this country because it's a dead sport. Yep. Uh, when we get back from the break, uh, speaking of people in the meet, uh, uh, Gene Simmons has declared rock and roll dead. He and he killed it. He kind of did. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah. He he didn't. He wasn't helpful. Uh, <laughs> but he's talking about. And he's exactly right. It's not just country music. We don't. There's no need for artists anymore. All you need is one guy with a computer and then a hot person to lip sync hey, to what he. When made. I was a kid. Kiss, uh, Bionic Bigfoot, and uh, uh, Nolan Ryan were the scariest things in my life. <laughs> Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan. Why was and, he? Did you did you bat against and him? Greg, and Greg Nettles. <laughs> Greg, wow. You know what? I don't know about you guys. I want to hear the rest of that story. I need to know why Louis Amistoy has a has a crippling fear of Nolan Ryan. We'll be right back. It's First Look with Scott Cox at Bakersfield.com and News Talk 1180 KERN.